hi welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here uh, strap in if you're new here because these tbrs what are they so it is june well, the TBR is for June. It's technically still May, but I'm getting this filmed before June starts. Look at me. Who am I? A new person. But um, this TBR is going to be huge, and that is simply because I want to get a bunch of fantasy read because whatever a thon is going on, which I will link down below if you want to join in, it's basically a team readathon thing and I'm competitive. I am in the one that I cannot remember the name of for the life of me, but I will put it on the screen right here. So aside from that, I'm on the team basically it's like a bunch of fantasy. So my goal is to read a bunch of fantasy and I'm in the fantasy mood anyways because I've been reading a lot of cozy mysteries, a lot of murder books, a lot of romance and now I'm ready for a dragon or two or three or eight. I want a lot. I want a lot of dragons. I just want um, But let's just get into it because a lot of these are actually trilogies or series. Here's the deal. Do I plan on reading all of these? No. That would be ridiculous. Uh, I just don't see that happening. But there are a lot of these that are rereads for me so I can either finish off a trilogy, reread so that I can finish off an entire series, you know, things like that. So I think that a lot of them will go by very quickly because I've already read them once or twice because I've tried to finish the series once or twice. I'm looking at you, Miss Laney Taylor. So I think, I think we can do this. But I think also, first of all, what we must do is thank our sponsor of the month, which what was all of this? I don't know. Uh, which is Book of the Month, Book of the Month. Let's just thank Book of the Month, these guys, right here. So if you do not know, Book of the Month is a monthly subscription box that you can find your next favorite read, which seems to always be the case with me because I swear they always pick the best books. And this month's lineup is so good, I kind of wish there wasn't a huge readathon going on so that I could just read them all. Obviously. I am a fan of them. I've been a fan of them for quite some time. You can see my shelves uh, on Instagram all the time are filled to the brim with Book of the Month books. And that is because with Book of the Month, they sort through hundreds of thousands of books every single month so that you don't have to put in that work. You just get to read the books that they have narrowed it down to and have the best chance of being your next favorite read. These are all kinds of genres. They really do diversify their picks, but if you really like a certain genre, they typically have add-ons that month where you can get up to two add-ons in your box. And I can tell you honestly, I've never ordered a box without getting add-ons because I have a problem. <laughs> but it's a great problem to have because I have so many books now and so many of them are ones that I've absolutely adored. My favorite part regarding Book of the Month is the fact that there is no penalty if you are not feeling the book choices that month that you can skip a month without any problem and then you can just pick up that next month and get a pick there. If you still don't find one, again, no issues. So they really work with you to find that book that you want to read and you don't have to read one or pick one that you don't think you're actually going to be interested in, which is a really nice feature because sometimes I'm not interested in anything and sometimes I'm interested in everything. So it's great that they have the skip and the add-on to just really cover all their bases, honestly. So if you want to try Book of the Month, I will leave my code and the link down below in the description. As always, I will leave the code on the screen for you. I definitely recommend The Maidens because I just, listen, just trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. Okay? It was great. So, thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Without further ado, let's get into the craziness that is uh, this TBR. So, let's start with a, I think it's a six book series. I want to reread the five and then finish the last one. It's on my shelves. I did not want to get the entire thing out because it is stacked, but it is the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes. This, I basically pitch it as if Game of Thrones was told from the lens of like Real Housewives of Atlanta or Beverly Hills, New York, whichever one you watch. I know you watch one of them. But it is very dramatic, very over the top, still has the Game of Thrones 
medieval setting, but then also the fact that they're all trying to vie for the same throne at the end of the day because it starts out as three different kingdoms, but throughout the series, just a whole lot goes on and it, they're trying to conquer everyone. And have I watched Game of the Thrones? No. Um, the only part I've ever watched was the first episode and then the episode where that girl ate a heart and then the last I watched the entire last season I wasn't disappointed because I had no idea what was going on or going wrong but um my partner and my mom and my brother loved the show so I was just the fourth wheel to make the car move I guess I don't know I was there for the food that my partner was baking every Sunday or whatever day it was and I, I provided cookies I mean that that's really why I was there I, I had no idea what was going on but this series this series is good. I'm already halfway through the first one. I'm telling you, these read so fast. They are not like prime, prime reading, okay? Like it's not the best thing you've ever read in your entire life, but I find so much enjoyment in them because they're so dramatic. Like if you ever read the Pretty Little Liars books, first of all, what even were those? That They were a fever dream for me, but those books were a mess. But every single time one would come out, I would surely buy it because it was a mess that I was into. And honestly, I need to watch that show. I never finished it. But these books are kind of like that. They're they're more well put together. People aren't coming back from the dead and stuff. But everyone gets killed. Every single book, someone ends up dying at the very end. And you never know who it's going to be. But there are like, I'm telling you, the plot twists are definitely there. Some of them you can see coming. Some of them are just like, I mean, dang, okay. But... Yeah, I just, I recommend this one. I think it's a fun time, so I think you should pick it up too because I'm going to be reading the whole dang thing this month. This one, I actually know it's going to happen because I'm already into it. Then, speaking of another one that I'm really just finishing, I'm over halfway through it, finally, is The Name of the Wind. This is, listen, I know that there's going to be someone in the comments as soon as I start describing this that goes, um, actually, and that's fine. <laughs> because you know what? You're probably right. But I'm doing my best, okay? So I'm actually over there. I actually think that this is about a guy who was in a, like, traveling thing with his parents. And then, you know. And so he goes to this school for, I think it's alchemy magic, essentially, is what we're learning about. And he is telling this entire tale of his life to someone who's writing it down so that they can tell the tale in taverns and stuff. And so we get these um, interludes that are him talking directly to the person that's writing down his story as a much older person. And then he goes back to telling his tale as his young self. And it is medieval magical school, basically. And I really like it because a lot of it is based in science and I don't know if this is the alchemical ma- is, is it alchemical? That rolled off the tongue, but a lot of incorrect pronunciations roll off my tongue, so I don't know if that was true. But didn't it sound natural for me to say? But I think that that is uh, a very interesting science. I think it's- I've heard about it a lot. I've heard about it a lot on the podcast that I listen to. Granted, they talk a lot about mysticism and magic and like energy magic and stuff, which it- yes, it is a true crime podcast, so it's a lot. It's like my brain just going everywhere all at one time. But I think they, that it's a real thing in our world. And so I find this interesting because it is more, I can buy into it more than like, you know, bippity boppity boo. I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. And the more I get into it, the easier the writing style is. I remember I did not care for the writing style when I first started because I was like, if I'm gonna read a fantasy, I want my Brandon Sanderson writing. That I, it's, it's smart, I can't understand. Like, you know what, N.K. Jemison is the goal, but I haven't worked my brain up to understand fully what I'm reading when I read her writing, so those books go slow, because that's a hope and a prayer. But I, I just, I actually like this because I can really understand what he's saying. It's not over descriptive, which, I'm, like, Tolkien, not going into it. I dropped the name and I'm walking away from it. It's not over descriptive, it's not too vague, it's like, Call me Goldie Relocks, because this is just right. Next up, we have a, another book that I want to finish. Let's just get, I think this is the last book that I'm halfway through though, so that's good. But I just have the dust cover because it's in a book sleeve, like literally right down there. But it's Kingdom of Copper. This is the second book in the David Bod trilogy. 
I'm not even going to describe it again. I feel like I've talked about this in every single TBR. Like when I said in May, my May TBR, I was just going to copy and paste it into June. I was fully kidding, but here we are. So I already talked about this. I want to finish this book. I'm very close to finishing it, which is great. It is like... <sighs> This book is full of the political issues, which y'all know I love in my fantasy, but we're starting to heat up and things are starting to get really intense and like a revenge plot is coming up and I think a villain is starting to spur about and I'm just like, it's making me very happy. So I want to finish this one. And then once I finish that, I want to go on to the Empire of Gold, which is the last in this trilogy. I've heard nothing but good things about it. I just haven't gotten to it yet. And I think, I think it's time. It is time. So next up is a full reread for me and these are some books that people have got very heated about in my videos because um, they were out of order. <laughs> And they're not out of order to me because I was putting my favorite copy on top. I'll just show you. So it is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This is about two sisters who they always dreamed of going to this magical traveling carnival basically where you get a ticket and then you participate in the carnival so you really as a participant don't know what's real or what's not real if you choose to be a watcher then you get to know what's real and not real I think I don't remember that if they actually disclose what it's like to be a watcher but they choose to participate naturally because we need a plot line and it's a whole mess there's this like aloof mysterious dangerous leader called legendary who hosts the whole thing it's just it's great it it is one of those books it's this author carrie maniscalco renee audier although renee audier with the beautiful and the damned i don't care what anyone says it's that writing style that's so beautiful and like the food is described so beautifully it's other than it's a very visually and like sensory pleasing writing style which I really like especially in my YA stories because I feel like it just it's just a nice time it's just so good it's just when I think of YA fantasy I really think of this kind of flowery beautiful writing that appeals to like all your senses and it's just I'm trying not to use the word aesthetic <laughs> But it is like that, that's a, like the perfect word in my head with the definition that I'm thinking of to describe this writing style. It's just so pleasing, I think. So this is the first book. How am I organizing these? Oh Lord. And then we have Legendary, which is the second book. This follows the other sister. The first one follow, follows, um, Lord, what is her name? The first one follows Scarlet and the second one follows Tella. I almost said Stella, technically. That would just be them merged together. And then the last one is Finale. Now this is the, yes, this is the last one. And yes, I had it on top of Carval. No, it didn't make sense. You weren't technically wrong if you commented that, but it's the Fairy Loot Edition who, someone was so sweet to put me in contact with someone who's gonna send this to me. And I never thought I was gonna have this edition because it, oh my God, it is just so beautiful. But it's got these sprayed edges on the top and the bottom, which I showed you in the wrong order. And then this stenciled, it was one of the first books I ever saw with stenciled edges. And then it has rose gold. So it's just beautiful. And I wanted to have it because this is one of my favorite series. It is one of those series though, that it is my favorite for nostalgia reasons. The only reason I'm disclosing this is because I know it's not gonna be everyone's favorite. And I want to make it known that the reason they're like all three five stars to me is because of nostalgia reasons, which we don't even need to get into it to this. I'm sure I've told it in a vlog and I'm sure I'll tell it to you again because I have an awful memory. Just so you know, yes, I rated the entire series three stars, five stars, not three stars, three sets of five stars. And we're just gonna move on at this point because I need to stop saying three and five. So the next one is a duology, so I will be rereading Strange the Dreamer once again and then finally reading Muse of Nightmares. I'm very excited for these books. I absolutely adored Strange the Dreamer. That ending every time, every time I read this ending, I'm like, yeah, this book is a little boring. Um, it was boring when I read it for the first time because I had just come off of reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone, the first book, and I was like, this is this is not fast paced at all. The other one was like bada bing bada boom everyone's dead. This one was not this is not fast at all. It was a lot of build up and just kind of mundane day to day things. But uh, once you get to the ending, all of that is so worth it because that ending is like 
well that was the story <laughs> Dang. And then Muse of Nightmares, I have no idea where we're going with this one considering the ending of Stranger Dreamer. So honestly, I'm ready to have a great time. I'm ready to cry. I'm ready just for any of it. And then speaking of Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I would like, now that I have my beautiful Illumicrate editions, which I did purchase for myself, I they're just so beautiful. I still think the second two, the second two, the second and the third are available on their website. Not 100% sure. Always worth checking though because they have such beautiful editions. But the first one is Daughter of Smoke and Bone. This is about a girl named Karu who she is the errand boy for this guy who deals in teeth. <laughs> and he does things for people and they pay him in teeth. It involves Chimera. Uh, it involves a whole lot. It's a whole lot. It's a lot. This is probably my favorite Lainey Taylor book though because it has the stereotypical for me YA fantasy feeling of that sensory appeal that I was talking about with Carval. But it's also um, I think her best book to me personally because the rest of the series I've read the second one and I can't remember if I just didn't like where it went or if I didn't understand where it was going. But either way this is so and there's a falling angel that is involved that's that's all i'm gonna say because honestly once you find out the twist i feel like everything kind of becomes a spoiler and i don't want to spoil it because when i read the twist oh my god it was so good so i just i highly 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 recommend i cry in this book every single time it's why i haven't really moved on to the second one for a second time to finish the third one but i think it's time to finally do it so that i can read all of my Lainey taylor books and so then the second one is days of blood and starlight it's got these beautiful little edges and then the final one is dreams of gods and monsters with these ones and yeah i'm just I'm excited. Like the back of this book, let's talk about the melodrama. Once upon a time, an angel and a devil pressed their hands to their hearts and started the apocalypse. Let's get it started in here. Let's get it started in hot. So a new release that I picked up recently is Victoria Aveyard's newest book, Realm Breaker. This, just from the back, it lists basically what I assume is a ragtag team of people squaring up. Why did I say square? It's because I saw the word squire. They're I, they're not doing anything in a square. The only thing I know about in a square is square dancing, and I don't even know how to do that. But uh, I guess they're going to all team up to save the world. I don't know. That's just what the last line tells me. So I really don't know what's going to go on in this book. I just know that this map, please. I also know I loved Red Queen, but people spoiled um, the rest of the series when I was halfway through Glass Sword. And then I was like, you know, I kind of hate where the series went. So I guess I don't... It was a ship thing for me personally. If you've read the series, you know what I'm probably, you probably know the ship I liked based on who I am as a human being. And then also because uh, we know I have taste, but um, that, that didn't swing the way I wanted it to swing. It swung the other way. And I was just like, mm, kill them all. So then next up, keeping with some YA, I think this is more of a, what is this? Where it's like city fan, it's not city fantasy, but it's our world fantasy. What is that called? All world fantasy? Maybe it has it labeled in here. Maybe I just don't know things. It doesn't have it labeled in here. It's I'm just going to say it's like realistic fantasy. Is that a thing? Probably not. You're going to comment and let me know what it is anyways, because you guys are amazing and you always correct me when I need to be corrected, which I do appreciate because I I really don't know, but it's Wings of Ebony, and they're, they have a little blurb in here. I always forget there's a description in this page right here, but I really should just start reading those. What the heck am I doing? But why I was interested in this is because half god, half human Rue is snatched from her Houston home to Guys on? A secret land of gods by her estranged father then must face an evil determined to steal everything from her i was interested because of houston because <laughs> that's in texas so i was like Ooh. also this cover like is beautiful i remember seeing it in barnes and noble and i was just like oh my god well hello so yeah i'm very excited i've heard nothing but good things about this book um honestly that tiny little blurb from the inside just sounded absolutely amazing so I'm definitely, I don't know, can y'all tell, I'm in the mood for YA fantasy and all of these YA fantasy that are coming out lately. This one, I don't know if this is like a super new release. I think it came out this year. I might be wrong about that, but it just sounds so good. They all sound so good. So this is definitely a trend. I know, I know, I know that I'm late on, it's fine. 
I don't even know what this book is about at this point, y'all. I just love Samantha Shannon because Prior to the Orange Tree is my favorite fantasy of all time. So I want to read her other books. This one is The Bone Season. I have not read this one yet. I have some tabs in here. Couldn't tell you why because I don't remember even opening this, but I want to. I own them. I think I own all but one of them and I think I don't own the third one because I know that I have the fourth one. I think it's the fourth one. I don't know. It's the falling mask, the mask falling, whatever that one is. I think that's the fourth one. I got it because um, Goldsboro had like this beautiful edition and I wanted to see what Goldsboro books were like anyways because I'm debating signing up for their science fiction fantasy subscription thing. So I wanted to see how their editions are and spoiler alert, they're great. So you should sign up too because let's just all throw on running at Goldsboro. I want to read that one because I have that entire series and I really just need to get through these series that I'm saving because why am I saving them? Okay, so this is one that I got because the cover, it was in an Illuminate box, so I was gonna buy it anyways, but you know, I was blessed with an Illuminate edition. Lady Taylor blurbed it on the cover, which I, I mean, y'all, can you tell now? Love Lady Taylor, but, and there's witches involved, that's the other thing. But let me find my handy dandy little, uh, never mind, it's not in this one. So I guess we're just not gonna know what this is about. We're just going in, knowing nothing. This is the Once and Future Witches. I have seen this labeled horror. I've seen this labeled paranormal. I've seen this labeled fantasy. I've seen it labeled fiction, which I mean, that one, I understand. The other ones, I'm like, I don't know which one this is a part of, but those are all three of my favorite labels for books. So only excitement here and it's gay. So that just makes it better to be honest. Then again, with the theme of carrying on in series. I want to read Fury Born's sequel, which is Kingsbane. I have this one in Lightbringer. I'd like to read Lightbringer as well, but let's not get <laughs> super ambitious, as if I'm not already completely being ridiculous with my TBR that I have set now. But this is, like I said, the sequel in this trilogy, I believe, and I absolutely adored Fury Born. I think it was done so well. When I was reading it, I was like, mm, this is YA fantasy. This is what I like because it's so fast paced. But here's, here's the thing. People who say that it's not fast paced, that's totally fair because in each storyline, because we have two going on at the same time, it's two POVs and it's two different timelines for the POVs. So one is set, like we'll say current time, and then the other one is set a thousand years prior. And in this world, basically in the thousand years prior POV, there is a thing where there's either gonna be a good witch or a blood witch, I think it's a sun, a sun goddess and a blood goddess. Maybe that's what it is actually. Either way, someone's bad, someone's evil. What? No, someone's good, someone's bad. And they don't know which one our POV that we're following is gonna fall under. She has to complete these trials to see. And then in the um, modern time POV that's happening at the current time, she is in this world where magic is completely forbidden and she basically is a person that turns people in that have magic so that she can earn money to keep her family alive. And the POVs start to collide at the end and I just remember reading it and every time I turned the page I was like, now what did I just read and what am I reading now? Because there was just so much going on. But I love fantasy books because there's always these, like there's all these different loose strings, so you think, that are just running through these people and you're like, what is even going on? These are never gonna tie together. And then you get to the last 50, 75 pages and everything is just woven so tightly and you're like, well, I can't believe I didn't see that the whole time, but fair enough. Uh, so I would like to read the second one and just see see where that's going because I've heard Lightbringer is absolutely amazing and no one ever says that about like the ends of trilogies, especially of the YA variety. So I, I want in on that. Then I have the pick. So my friend Mel from Mel Reads and I are hosting a Patreon buddy read book club thing. I'll link it down below if you'd like to join if you're interested. But basically what we're going to do is we pick a book. Well, y'all vote on a book and then we pick that for that month and then together we have a reading sprint on my patreon and then a reading sprint on her patreon we have a discord you get access to both discords despite who you're signed up for you get access to the reading sprints as well despite who you're signed up for you can sign up to both you don't have to so if you're already signed up to one or the other you should have access to it um and then we also are the only thing that's separate is like i'm going to be doing a reading vlog and a journaling video for it and she is gonna be doing something along those lines as well. So 
those are on our respective patrons but other than that it's basically just like a uh, chaotic book club thing that we're doing on patreon so if you're interested link down below but all of that out done now a dark and hollow star <sighs> this is beautiful these uh, another illuminate edition basically i'm reading my illuminate books hi i'm olivia Illuminate. uh this is super gay or er is it urban fantasy is that what i'm looking for is that the word i'm looking for I've heard someone say urban fantasy before. Oh, it says urban fantasy in the blurb. So is that, does that mean that it's fantasy set in our world? So it's like the Cruel Prince and City of Bones urban fantasy too? Hmm, much to think about. I kind of like just fantasy. I think I'm just going to stick with fantasy. So this says it's the Cruel Prince meets City of Bones, which I get that vibe too because basically it is City of Bones but with Faye. And yeah, I know Shadowhunter's World has Fae, but not enough for my liking. Except, what is it called? The Dark Artifices? There's a lot of Fae. A lot of Fae. A lot of Fae to go around, if you know what I mean. I shipped that trio. Anyways, I am excited to read this. I know that it is a thriller fantasy with Fae. And it's really gay. Hello. Hello, LGBTQ community. Next, I want to read... A Queen of Gilded Horns because I absolutely adored A Queen or wait A River of Royal Blood. A River of Royal Blood was one of my favorite books when it came out. Was that in 2018 I think? I think so. I just have not been in a fantasy mood since I was able to pick this copy up and now I am. It's time. It is time. I believe a river, I want to say A River of Royal Blood was Amanda Joy's debut. Not 100% sure, but I think it was because I remember being so in love and I was like, give me all of her books. And then I had to wait for this one to come out. But okay, let's just talk about it. So this is set in a world where it is a queendom and usually there's only one daughter born and then she becomes a queen. But if there are two born or more, they have to fight to the death and then one whoever kills their sister becomes queen. So very violent, very intense. And one sister has magic and the other one cannot access her magic. So to be fair, it's not fair. But alas, the show must go on, I suppose. So I'm excited to see where it's gonna go because I might need to reread A River of Royal Blood because I don't fully remember all the details in the beginning, but I remember the end. I remember the end. So I might actually tack on A River of Royal Blood as well so that I can reread it and then go into this one because they're very short books. Like they're very small and they, oh, the writing style is so good because you just fly through it. Like it's so fast paced, such a good writing style for fast paced. Sometimes writers should not be fast paced because their writing style doesn't really match up if that makes sense it doesn't make sense but it does here uh but this one just all of it just it's just perfection okay then here is the thing so i don't know if i'm exactly in the mood for this but this is my series that kind of itches the scratch no scratches the itch that the diviners left now that it's done and King of Crows is what we were left with. I won't take questions at this time. Yes, I rated it five stars, and now I'm not moving that rating, ever. But it was not five stars. This one is set in the 1920s. It's got time travel involved, so it's a little different than Diviners, but the 1920s feeling is there, and the forbidden, not forbidden romance, but it's more of the romance that they keep denying that they like each other, which is even better, in my opinion. I'm like, mm, yeah, you, <laughs> deny, deny. But then they're, you know, they're looking at each other and the other one looks and they're like, I see you. That kind of thing. I just love it. I love it. I love it. Anyways, The Serpent's Curse. This is the third book. I thought it was the last book. It's not. There's another book that's coming out, apparently. And I need to read this because, let's see. First of all, it's almost 800 pages. Oh, the second book was so good, but I made the mistake of listening to it on audio. I'll tell you right now, this is not an audio series. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. I thought because of the 1920s aspect, like the Diviners, it was going to be a great audio book. It's not. It's not. It's not the narrator's fault. It's not. The Diviners was a good length for this, and there was a serial killer. This is not as fast paced, as you can tell by 800 pages, and the narrator is fine but it's 800 pages okay like it's just if you can do that i bow to you but i'm just warning you the audiobooks are not the best way to go because the story is really good 
but the audiobooks are hard. Uh, the Last Magician is the first one, and it is about this girl, Esta, who has basically trained her whole life to time travel back in time to get these artifacts from... Is it, it's not the circle. It's some... It's this group of people. The Order. It's the Order. The Order is basically trying to... Well, you know what? Now that I haven't read The Last Magician in about three years, I don't fully remember. But I think The Order doesn't want people to have magic. So they're trying to ban it for good. And she is trying to stop that, I think. Don't take my word for it. It is a really good book. I promise it is. It's got that angsty romance. And now there is a um, god involved within the romance. <laughs> I won't explain how, because that's fun to trip into how that works out but uh yeah we're gonna see if i can finish this i don't know if i'll finish this i think that i i think that i will pick it up at some point in this month i will technically pick it up then to continue on with the ya fantasy because i'm really trying to sprinkle in a bunch of ya so that all these series don't seem as scary and daunting i have lore all i know for this one is it is set in our world it's a fantasy and it is about the Greek gods. And I think that what I heard in a YouTube video, I don't wanna hear what people describe this as because I don't wanna to know too much, but it is in modern day New York. And I think that it's the Greek gods were punished by like being human for a day or something every, I don't even know when. I don't know, it honestly to me, a little bit sounded like the premise of just the games in the hunger games where it's the hunter be hunted hunter be hunted thing aspect of it but greek gods i don't know we my class and i just finished uh catching fire so i kind of want to read that and then my last series it's a big one i know I know, but this is one I'm very excited about. I know that it's gonna be heavy, which is one of the reasons that I have so many more lighthearted ones and why the very last set of books that I have is gonna make a lot more sense after I show you this one. But I have the Poppy War and then I have the Dragon Republic and the Burning God. This is probably, aside from finishing off The Name of the Wind, just so I can freaking say that I did it and no, I'm not reading the sequel, that's my biggest goal is to read the Poppy War trilogy because I've heard nothing but good things about it. I know it's based on a real life war. I know that it's graphic. Um, I know that it's not YA fantasy, which is why I am not calling it. I'm like, it's just fantasy. I know. And I'm really excited about it because it seems dark and graphic, which makes sense because uh, the war that it's about. But also, I just am excited to get into some intense fantasy again because I haven't really been reading a lot of intense fantasy this year and I want to. So I'm excited to pick it up. Uh, nervous because I really hope that I love it. I think that I will. I don't have any reason to think I won't. But, you know, you just always want to like the books you go into. And then the last little series I want to finish is just to uh, sprinkle some serotonin in my life this month. And because um, it's our month, guys. Hello. Let's go gays. Uh, Heartstarper, volume one. Then I have Heartstarper, volume two. And then I have Heartstarper, volume three. And then, oh, what is Heartstarper, volume four. Yes. I'm very excited for this. I had a lot of people commenting asking where I got volume three last year when I got it, like on time when it came out, I think in the UK. And then I had people asking this year about volume four. I just pre-order them from Book Depository. Uh, Book Depository never makes it a mission to be quick with their ship times, which is fine because really probably didn't even need to have ordered the books. I don't need them pronto. You know what I'm saying? But um, they are very fast when it comes to pre-orders. I Maybe it's because I'm not sitting there by my mailbox waiting for the pre-order to show up. Maybe that's why it feels fast. But I, this one got to me like two or three days after I had pre-ordered it. So I just recommend going that route because that's how I always get it. And then also that's where I got the first one. So I wanted them to be the same height because I have a fear of my books being different heights and me not knowing because I ordered them online. <laughs> but yeah, I want to finish up this uh, up to where it is in the series thus far. But yeah, that's my June TBR. Um, it was not going to be this fantastical until I joined this readathon, which I'm ready to demolish everyone else. It's going to be great. It's going to be great, grand, fun, and fresh. 
Um, I also will just add on that I'll probably be reading some more cozy mysteries. Uh, I'm excited for those. I have this 20 book series that I'm in the middle of right now. It's kind of my right before bedtime book and my treadmill book because it's very lightweight because it's my Kindle. <laughs> that was ridiculous to say. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's all. And I think that I'm just gonna like keep the rainbow emoji as my emoji of the video for a while because it's been so rainy here. It's June. Let's play into corporate America and just throw those rainbows everywhere. Am I right? I have to go to Target later today and I'm kind of scared because our clothing section is like right at the front of this Target. That's close-ish to us, but it has a bigger food section and uh, those clothes feel aggressive. <laughs> to me okay I was hoping for some cute pride clothes because I was like oh, let me go get like a whole my June outfit and then um, I saw them and I thought TikTok was just like joking but they weren't it's really bad so anyways leave an emoji of a rainbow to uh, fix what Target has brought upon us and yeah that's it thanks so much for watching I hope you're having a wonderful morning afternoon or night wherever you are thank you so much to book of the month for sponsoring this video and i will uh catch you in the next video and i'll talk to you in the comments down below bye